Oh, sorry. I'm just headbanging to Bangladesh. It's time to learn geography now. Hey, peeps. I'm your host, Paul Barbato. Insert intro thing because I didn't write anything. Let's dissect the flag. Now, you've probably seen this flag before and thought, who dipped the flag of Japan in a tub of algae? Well, it's not some green mutated version of Japan's flag, it's Bangladesh's. Essentially, the flag has a green field and red circle that is not in the center, but a little bit offset closer to the hoist side. And the reason for this is so that it looks centered when the flag is waving in the air. Green represents the lush, fertile green interior of the land of Bangladesh, and the red represents the sun. Simple! Moving on. <laughs> Now, this is gonna be really fun because Bangladesh has some of the most confusing territories on the planet. First of all, the country is located in Asia, east of India, and almost completely surrounded by India, including that narrow little Siliguri Corridor, or the Chicken's Neck of India, a small but reasonably sized border with Myanmar in the southeast, and the Bay of Bengal located to the south. The capital and largest city is Dhaka, located in the lower central region, right above the Padma River and the Ganges Delta. Now, here at Geography Now, one thing we love are enclaves and exclaves because they are delightfully confusing. And it is with great honor that I present to you the country with the second most enclaves in the entire world, Bangladesh, right after India. When you hit the north of Bangladesh in the Rangpur region, all hell breaks loose and suddenly you see this huge mess of territories that are sprinkled around the entire border, owned and marked by each side. It gets especially messy when you go to the north of the Tista River by the Bengali town of Petgram and see a smorgasbord of over 60 enclaves and exclaves scattered in a weird random order that makes no sense. Many of these enclaves are first order and second order enclaves, that's enclaves inside of enclaves, and the world's only third order enclave, Dahala Kagrabari 51. One, a small crop field barely the size of two acres. This land is a piece of India within Bangladesh within India within Bangladesh. Talk about Inception or Landception. The Halakagrabari 51 is actually owned by a Bengali farmer who lives on the Bengali side, even though the land kind of belongs to India. Most of these enclaves are farmlands that were owned by families mixed in with the area long before the borders were drawn up by the British, which is why some areas don't relent their property to the other country. The Indian and Bangladeshi governments have announced their intentions to resolve the issue by swapping 162 enclaves by giving residents a choice of nationality. However, the process isn't really moving and is kind of stuck in a red tape limbo. As we'll soon find out, Bangladesh's land is shaped heavily by the landscape and immense river systems that flow through the entire country, like vital bloodstreams fostering life to the entire region. And by soon, I mean like right now. Last time we learned about Bahrain and found out that some countries have a problem getting water. Well, Bangladesh kind of has the complete opposite problem, and they have too much water. One thing you have to understand is that Bangladesh's largest resource is their rivers. In fact, the Bengal Delta is the largest delta in the world, and the country has more transboundary rivers than anywhere else at 58. This means that they share rivers with both India and Myanmar. Altogether though, Bangladesh has about 700 main rivers, the largest ones being the Padma, or better known as the Ganges in India, and the Jamuna, or the Brahmaputra. This is actually pretty impressive considering that Bangladesh is only about half the size of the UK. Now, because of all the rivers and the silt deposits, natural irrigation and land cultivation is amazing. Bangladesh is an ecological gem. In fact, some of the most fertile soil in the world is found in Bangladesh, allowing them to grow thousands upon thousands of different crops, plants, and orchards. One thing they're especially known for growing is jute. I actually had no idea what jute was prior to making this video, and then I found out it's actually the stuff they use to make ropes and burlap. See, I'm just like one of you. I'm learning. <laughs> Bangladesh is generally split up into two different separate regions, the low-lying flat delta where most of the land is only at 10 meters or less above sea level, and the small hilly plains mostly in the north, northeast, and southeast by Chittagong. Speaking of Chittagong, Bangladesh has the world's longest uninterrupted beach in the world, Cox's Bazaar. This place goes on and on for 75-ish miles, however, Bengalis would kind of prefer if you didn't check out the north part by Batiari because it kind of looks a little trashy. It's a huge ship graveyard where companies all over the world like to dispose of their old ships, where the people of the region can break apart and salvage the pieces for profit. Now, Bangladesh is, of course, blessed with fertility. Often villages are buried underneath mango and coconut and jackfruit trees, and beautiful forests with an abundance of flora and fauna, such as the Sundarbans, the world's largest mangrove 
forest, which is kind of like the last place where you can find the Bengali tiger. However, there is a problem. Bangladesh is kind of subject to terrible, terrible tropical storms almost every year and sometimes even tornadoes. On top of that, during annual monsoon season, the rivers get so swollen that two thirds of Bangladesh's 64 districts typically experience flooding that causes extensive property damage, loss of communications, loss of drinking water, loss of crops, and leads to the spread of disease, which eventually leads to death. It's kind of crazy though, because for such an environmentally rich area, Area, the country has to deal with almost equally damaging environmental challenges. Now add on top of that the fact that Bangladesh is incredibly dense in population. Let's talk about that. Bangladesh's people have a very unique story in that they kind of had to how can I put this? They had to fight two rounds for two separate independences, one of them from the British and the other from Pakistan. In the shortest, simplest way that I can put this without boring you and with cute little motion graphic animations so that you'll pay attention and you might actually learn something, Bangladesh was for a long time part of the British Empire. However, after the British left, they separated the region into two states and three regions, the predominantly Hindu state being India and the predominantly Muslim state being West Pakistan and East Pakistan, which is now known as modern day Bangladesh. West Pakistan administered East Pakistan and the capital of the time was Karachi and was also located in West Pakistan. Despite the fact that both sides were Muslim, they had very little in common both culturally and linguistically. East Pakistan eventually became furious because they felt as though they were being taken over by Pakistan and especially angry when Pakistan tried to establish and institute Udu as the official language and almost nobody spoke it as everybody there spoke Bengali. Wars, wars, fighting, fighting, yada, yada. They gained their independence in 1971 and joined the UN. Done. Once again, let me remind you guys, this is geography now, not history now. now as mentioned before, Bangladesh is very dense in their population with a population of about 160 million people. In fact, if you exclude the city states like Singapore and Hong Kong, although Hong Kong is technically under Chinese sovereignty, Bangladesh is the most densely populated country in the world and the eighth most populous. The country is predominantly Muslim and about 86% of the adherents being Sunni or Sufi Muslim and about 12% are Hindu and the remaining 2% are mostly Christian and Buddhists. Now, surprisingly, they all get along with each other pretty well, but let's find out who else Bangladesh gets along with. Now, Bangladesh tries to maintain good ties with pretty much every country in the world and doesn't really typically choose sides when it comes to major world powers. Nepal is like a tactical friend to Bangladesh and it's mostly based on strategic agreements. Nepal does good business and Bangladesh gives them access to the ocean. The Maldives likes to hire Bengali people for work, especially with their huge tourism sector. About 40,000 Bengali workers live in the Maldives. For Sri Lanka, the first king was said to have ancestors from Bangladesh and the Bengali Buddhist community has sent Sri Lanka a gift from what are allegedly a few strands of Buddha's hairs and are worshiped objects on Poya Day, a Buddhist holiday in Sri Lanka. Now, Myanmar has generally good relations with Bangladesh. However, there's a little controversy over the Rohingya people, a Muslim tribe living in the north part of Myanmar that are being attacked and persecuted by radical extremist Buddhists living in the area. That's right, you heard me. Radical extremist Buddhists they do exist. Because of this, the Rohingya people have been flocking to Bangladesh as refugees, which has been causing them more and more drama as an already overpopulated and relatively poor country. The US was and still is the largest aid provider for Bangladesh and is one of the top trade partners in textiles. One thing that Bangladesh is like really good at making. I mean, have you seen the tags on the back of your shirts? It might just be from Bangladesh. However, Bangladesh is doing so well at developing their infrastructure that they've decreased their aid dependency from 85% in 1988 to about 2% in 2010. This is good for both countries. For the UK, yes, Bangladesh was part of the former British Empire, and even though they fought for independence and didn't like the British rule, the British culture still permeated the Bengali culture over the years, and it is very evident even today. I mean, their favorite sport is cricket, they drive on the left side of the road, and English is the second most commonly spoken language. To this day, despite the historical tension, the two countries get along just fine and have strong diplomatic ties. In terms of their best friends, though, they more or less might consider Bhutan and India. For Bhutan, they only have two embassies in their entire country, one for India and one for Bangladesh. This is kind of huge as we will soon find out in a future episode how incredibly isolated Bhutan is. Bhutan was the second country to recognize Bangladesh as a state and has decided they want to invest heavily in the country's business. For India, it's funny because a predominantly Hindu country defended a Muslim country from another Muslim country. They were the first to recognize Bangladesh as a state and supported them in the war against Pakistan However, afterwards, they kind of got into a few squabbles themselves. Apparently, they didn't realize that after drawing the 
borders, they had to share like a lot with Bangladesh. Things started popping up like the enclave disputes and the Ganges River irrigation drama and complaints that too many Bengali people were living illegally in India. However, in the end, they get along pretty well and are always there to support each other. In conclusion, Bangladesh is blessed and cursed in so many ways, yet no matter what gets thrown at them, they always stay afloat when the flood comes and when it dries up, they're ready to get right back up and plant those crops all over again. Stay tuned, Barbados is coming up next. Hey peeps, just wanna say thank you to all the Patreon patrons on Patreon that are helping me and supporting me out financially uh, so I can get this series done better. Especially a huge thanks to Brian Roland. You are the VIP patron, so thank you so much for that. And uh, yeah guys, feel free to subscribe just by clicking on this box that I'm in right now. And uh, stay tuned, more Geography Now videos coming up. Thank you.